Welcome to an example on how to use the T84 graphing calculator to determine a probability using a normal distribution. And we'll find the probability both using the data values as well as using z-scores. In this example, a manufacturer knows that their items have a normally distributed length with a mean of 11 inches, and the standard deviation is 2.4 inches. So we know that mu, the mean, equals 11, and the standard deviation, or sigma, equals 2.4. If one item is chosen at random, what is the probability that it is less than 8.5 inches long? So we can express this probability as the probability that x, the length of a randomly selected item, will have a length of less than 8.5 inches. Let's begin by modeling this using the normal distribution curve, where because the mean is 11, 11 would be here in the middle, and the horizontal axis is scaled by standard deviations. So 11 plus 2.4 is 13.4. 13.4 plus 2.4 is equal to 15.8. 15.8 plus 2.4 is equal to 18.2. Now the left of 11, we would have 11 minus 2.4, which is 8.6. 8.6 minus 2.4 is 6.2. And 6.2 minus 2.4 is equal to 3.8. Notice how the length of 8.5 inches would be just to the left of 8.6 approximately here. And because we're looking for the probability that x is less than 8.5, we want to determine the probability that the length is to the left of 8.5 or in this region here. Now that we have a better understanding of the probability that we're looking for, we'll now go to the TID4 and use the normal CDF feature to determine this probability. So we'll press second VARS for the distribution menu, option two for normal CDF. Now if you have an older operating system, you won't see this screen. You'll actually see the normal CDF feature on the home screen. So you'll have to enter this information on the home screen rather than on this screen. We first need to enter the lower bound. And because we're looking for the probability that x is less than 8.5, we need to exaggerate the left bound or lower bound by entering in a very small negative number now we could leave this as negative one times 10 raised to the power of 99, but I typically just enter negative 99999, because this also works well. Enter. Now the upper bound is going to be the length of 8.5, so we enter 8.5, enter. Mu is the mean of 11, enter. Sigma is the standard deviation of 2.4, enter. When the cursor is on paste, we press enter. And now if you do have an older operating system, from the home screen, after normal CDF, you'll have to remember the order. It's always lower bound, comma, upper bound, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation, close parenthesis, and then enter. To four decimal places, the probability is approximately 0 0.1488. Notice how the fifth decimal place is an eight, so we round up. So the probability is approximately 0 0.1488 as a decimal. Now let's also solve this using z-scores. To use z-scores to find that probability, we would begin by determining the z-score for 8.5. This is actually what you'd have to do if you were required to use a table to find this probability. So the z-score for 85 is equal to the quantity x minus mu divided by sigma, which is the data value of 8.5 minus the mean of 11, all divided by the standard deviation of 2.4. Simplifying, we would have negative 2.5 divided by 2.4, which would simplify to negative 25 fourths as an exact value, as an improper fraction. Let's also get our decimal approximation, though, which is what you would find in a table. So negative 25 divided by 24 is approximately negative 1.0417. Which means the probability that x is less than 8.5 would be equal to the probability that the z-score is less than, let's use the exact value of negative 25 24 ths Let's also model this using the standard normal distribution curve shown here because now we have the standard normal distribution curve, 
the horizontal axis is scaled by z-scores, where the z-score in the middle here would be zero, to the right we'd have one, two, three, to the left we'd have negative one, negative two, and negative three. So notice how the z-score of negative 25 fourths would be just to the left of negative one, which should be approximately here, the same place where we found 8.5 on the horizontal axis of the normal distribution. So here we had a z-score of, again, negative 25, 20 fourths. We're looking for the probability that the z-score is less than negative 25, 20 fourths. So we're looking for the probability of the z-score being in this region here. Remember, because we have the standard normal distribution curve, the probability is actually equal to this area under the curve over this interval, or the total area under the standard normal distribution curve is equal to one. So going back to the calculator, we'll press second VARS again, option two for normal CDF. Again, if you have an older operating system, you won't see this screen. You'll enter the information from the home screen. The lower bound exaggeration of negative 99999 is still going to work because we're looking for all the area to the left of negative 25 fourths, so we'll press enter. For the upper bound, we'll enter the exact upper bound of negative 25, 20 fourths. This will give us less of an error than if we use a decimal approximation of negative 1.0417. Because we're using a z-score now, mu of the mean is going to be zero, and sigma of the standard deviation will be one. So enter, enter, enter again. And notice how we get the exact same result as we did before. The probability is approximately 0.14 Eight, eight. Of course, normally, we would not find the probability using the data value of 8.5, and then again, using the z-score of negative 25, 20 fourths. But I think it's important to understand the connection between the two methods. And if you're required to use a table, you would have to use the z-score method. I hope you found this helpful.